Good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's session, the live Facebook session here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Professor Aparnath once again for giving me this opportunity to have a little discussion today with you and also share some inputs with you. So today's session, which is on way out of the quicksand, a quick guide to getting unstuck. That's the topic. Well, the way we're going to go through the today's session is we're going to do a little discussion. Response, question answer session at the end. So what is this way out of the quicksand? So what is quicksand? So we all know what quicksand is, right? So quicksand is basically when sand and gravel and some salt water gets mixed, it becomes like a muddy patch. Now this kind of a muddy patch, uh, which is there in nature, has a distinct quality. Okay, which, what is a distinct quality? It sucks in things. So for example, if you're standing on a surface where there is quick sand there, then if you stay there for some time, you will feel that you're being pulled in. So slowly you will start sinking in, right? So that is quick sand. So I'm using this quick sand today as a simile or as something to which we're going to uh, compare a few situations that we often find ourselves in, in life, um, at work or off work. So what kind of situations are we referring to? So let me begin with clarifying what kind of situations we are referring to here. So let's say we are in, I'm in a situation. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's say we have somebody, um, Let's give a, a character a name today. So let's say we have somebody called Anita. Um, and uh, Anita is somebody who's very, very good at, uh, you know, creating very great visuals and making fantastic PowerPoint presentations. Now, Anita gets into a role where, you know, she comes up with great looking PowerPoint presentations. Her boss is impressed. Those presentations, when they're presented to the senior management, they're pretty impressed by the way the data has been captured and, uh, you know, put there visually. Uh, and she, she does that. So the first time she does it, wow, she gets a lot of appreciation. She feels good about it. And slowly as time builds on, because of this unique ability that Anita possesses, what happens to her is she becomes an expert in that field, in the team. So what happens because she's an expert? A lot of those kind of tasks come, start coming to her. The most critical tasks come to her when it, come, when it comes to making a great PowerPoint presentation. So the boss starts, her boss starts relying her, on her more. She's good, she's, uh, you know, she's got, let's say 100% accuracy there. So she's, become, she's very re reliable and over time she becomes the expert in the team. Now, that's a nice space to be in. A lot of people that I meet when we do workshops again and when people come to me for coaching, they say sometimes, you know what, Varsha, Anita comes, let's say Anita comes to me and tells me, you know what, Varsha, this very expertise of mine is the reason why I have not grown in my organization. Now, that's... It sounds surprising, but yes, I'm talking about a lot of us who feel that sometimes we are being punished because of our expertise. Now, what is this punishment? Well, Anita here feels that I'm just getting the same kind of work. I'm not getting to do other things. I'm just doing the visuals of the PowerPoint presentation. How about the analytics? How about me getting an opportunity to go out there and make the presentation? How about me being there in that room with my boss and, and you know, seeing what I have made being presented and seeing how it's being received by the audience? So these are the kind of opportunities that Anita feels, hey, I'm not getting. 
So, so what would she do? She'd probably go up there and she'll tell her boss that, hey, you know what, I also want to be doing this. And the boss does want to give her an opportunity. However, he probably has no one else he can rely on to make that fantastic presentation. So by this time, not only the boss, but also her team members and everybody in that particular organization has comes to know about how good she is at what she's doing. And therefore, she's known and a lot of people keep coming to her seeking her support to create great visuals. <clears throat> now, in a situation like this, if this continues over a period of time, what happens to Anita? What happens to her frame of mind? She starts feeling stuck. She starts feeling, hey, I'm not growing. I'm not doing anything different. I'm only doing this. And therefore, she comes, you know, she probably starts feeling, I'm being punished. I think I'm being punished for what I do well. Another example is I felt that um, I would learn, let's say, A, how to analyze certain trends in the market. But I was also promised that I would go and I would be able to meet uh, the clients too. However, let's say it's been one year now, but I'm only doing the analysis, I'm not moving. I've gone, I've tried, and sp I've tried to speak to my colleagues and see, um, you know, and so I, I've tried to ask them, how do I go about meeting clients? Can I accompany you? I've probably gone to my boss and I've checked if I could do it, but they keep telling me, hey, wait. Yeah, we will give you the opportunity. But right now, just do this. Now, I come every day to work. I do this mundane task every day and I'm feeling stuck. Okay, this is another example of being stuck. A third example is of somebody who, uh, let's say I'm in a job, I'm, I've worked there for let's say three, four, five years now, so uh, I, have a, I have the job security and uh, I'm doing, but I feel that the organization is not so big. I want to do something else. I want to move, I want to grow. But this organization does not give me the platform to grow. So I start feeling stuck. Right? Why? Because here, yes, I need the job. It's not that I can quit the job and go. I need to keep my job. It's a necessity for my life. But I also want to grow. Now here, two things are conflicting. I need the security of my job. That's one. And the other is I want to grow. So I want security, but I want to fly. So these two or three situations that I have kind of shared with you now are very, very normal situations that many of us go through in different phases of our careers. Okay, and I'm sure you can relate to some situation that you, where you have been stuck. It could be similar to these three situations or it could be something else. So basically this feeling of being in a situation where you feel there's no way out. You've tried small little things, you've made small attempts, but there's no movement yet and so you're feeling stuck so if you're in these kind of situations here at this point i would like to ask all of you to just think i'm going to pose a question to you and what i'm going to request each one of you there who's who are here with me today live to just go to your chat box and put your responses so the responses could be a few words or one sentence Okay, so my question to you is, whenever you found yourself to be in similar situations where you felt stuck, where you feel you're being pulled into the situation, pulled down into the situation, what are some emotions or what are some feelings you've felt at that time? So could we have your responses? And then we can continue the discussion. <clears throat> I 
can't see any responses yet so people who are there with me live Right, so we have Mohit here, yeah, Mohit, yes, you feel worried, uh, you're definitely disappointed, okay, anything else? So, so Mohit, when you're feeling worried and you're being, and you're feeling disappointed, yes, Pranali says shattered, Okay, so you feel, oh, the world has crashed down. There's nothing else for me. Um, what, what are the feelings or emotions? So where would these feelings lead? Say worried, disappointed, the feeling of being shattered. Okay, so um, you feel frozen. So you feel you're stuck. You're feeling numb. You don't know what to do. Hmm. Okay. So what happens next? Once you feel frozen, shattered, what else will happen to you in this state? There'll probably some of us may uh, feel uh, directionless. Uh, some people sometimes have expressed to me that they feel fear. Um, they get very anxious, um, yes, and with distractedness, they, they start losing concentration, uh, they may start losing um, interest in what they're doing every day, so the task which was very interesting for them, the same task becomes very boring and mundane, yeah, they, they don't enjoy that same task as much as they did earlier. Um, Yes, the feeling of being lost, not knowing where to go. Now, if you look at this train of thoughts that you have expressed, is there a link to them? Yeah, you see a link? So you feel shattered, you feel worried, you feel disappointed, and you feel, okay, I don't know where to go. Uh, I don't know what to do. So from here, maybe the confidence level starts getting impacted a little bit. And if this trend goes on and on and on, what is going to happen? What is going to happen is you're, we are going to feel more and more and more stuck. Now, this so someone here has very nicely mentioned that we feel numb, right? So it's these negative thoughts. Yeah. So once you start a train of negative thoughts, it kind of builds. That's how the brain works. So one negative thought leads to another, leads to another. Now the brain is a supercomputer; It can't stop at one word. One thought, it will trigger so many others. And if that train or if that trend is negative, then it becomes a vicious negative circle in which we keep going round and round and round and feel no way out. Correct? So in these situations when you're worried, when you're disappointed, when you're feeling frozen, most of us, what do we do? We either tell a friend, we, we call up a friend or we talk to somebody we are close to in the family and we tell them, hey, you know what, I feel this, I'm feeling hopeless, I don't know what to do, I don't know if I'm in the wrong, right job, I don't know if I'm good enough for this job. Maybe these are the kind of dialogues you're having with the person, right? So what happens is, yes, we do stick, but we are stuck. And what are we doing? We start seeking support, okay? Now, I want you to hold these thoughts and I want you to compare this with being stuck in that quicksand. So in that pit where, is, where there is quicksand, if you're stuck there, yeah, you're feeling your legs going, you know, being pulled inside, you feel you can't move, you're feeling the pressure on your legs. Just like that, the negative thoughts start working and you start the feeling the pressure. And once you start feeling the pressure, what happens? Yeah, your productivity goes down. Okay, you start feeling low. So this whole feeling of being stuck, in that situation, the first response is to go, what did you do? Go and talk to a friend. 
Now let's say you go to a friend or you seek somebody's, uh, you know, you speak to someone and you say, you know what, I'm in such an really feeling hopeless. And the person tells you, hey, no, it's okay. It happens to all of us. It's fine. You're doing fine. You're doing your best. Okay, let's say you get a response like this. Does that immediately make you positive? Does this help you change? The question I'm asking you today is, many of us, you know, we've read so many books, we see so many, um, uh, there's so much material available, uh, which tells, yes, immediate uh, quick fixes to start thinking positively. My question to you is how easy it is to start thinking positively. Just if a friend tells you or if I tell you, hey, you know what, this is the case in every organization, okay? Right now, in the industry, this is what is going on. So, don't complain. This is how it is. If, if you get an answer like this, in this frame of mind, is it easy for you to put that mask and pretend and start acting as if it's fine? Yeah, some of us do that. Let me be very, very real with you. We all wear social masks. Yeah, somewhere it works because you're, you're infusing that positivity in you. But how? That's the question. Feeling. You know, I heard this, this is what is happening, and you say, fine. Is that good or bad? It depends, okay? It depends on what you mean by fine. Are you saying that I'm fine with the situation that I'm in? Or I, are you saying that I'm fine being stuck, stuck in the situation? Or I'm fine or I'm, I have accepted what my situation is? So it's a, there, there's a difference here. There are two things. One is I'm fine and I accept my situation. And the second is, I am fine. Yeah, where I'm saying, I'm not really accepting my situation, but I've put on this map, so I'm going to pretend that I'm fine. So there are two elements here. Now, if you're looking at I'm pretending, what happens? I wanted to just think two minutes and again give me responses. And I'm waiting for your responses. Supposing you're wearing this mask and you're pretending and telling people I'm fine. What happens to you from within? So in this discussion today, I'm pushing all of you who are here with me live today to think a little bit and do some introspection. So can we have some responses? Okay, there's one response which says, we don't really feel good about ourselves. Definitely not because you're pretending and you constantly have fear of being caught. What if somebody asks me something, what will I say? Anything else? Yes, it makes you feel more helpless because you know it's not you, it's not the true you. Uh, the pressure builds more. You're more conscious when you're talking. And possibly, uh, you'll probably start avoiding people after a point. Uh, you're forced to explore one day, wanting to scream and say that I'm not fine. Yes, definitely. Either that or you may vent out that frustration on somebody else, right? So either when you're driving or you, when you're getting into a public transport, you might vent out the fr frustration in some other way. Any others? All right, good. So from whatever two, three responses we've got, you've seen that even if you wear the social mask, which works in, you know, uh, in a very short uh, term, it, it helps you go and face the world. You're not feeling so good about yourself, but you need to face the world. You need to get up there and go to the office, go and attend that meeting to, 
yeah or probably attend a wedding at the in the family when you're going through all this inside your mind and so you we wear that mask and we say hey i'm fine now please remember these are two natural responses of a human being so there's nothing wrong yeah even if you tell people i'm feeling worried i'm feeling hopeless if you feel this or you say i'm going to be fine i'm going there's nothing wrong they're natural responses now our brain is programmed to defend us us correct so if you go by darwin's theory of it's it, what does it say it says survival of the fittest and therefore in order to protect ourselves so in any situation like the quicksand situation i explained that's an uncomfortable situation to be in so when i'm stuck in a situation like this i feel the need to protect myself i am uncomfortable i don't like what i'm going through the feelings of worry fear anxiety hopelessness they're bothering me and therefore what happens is my self defense mechanism comes up right and it says it's fine you can pretend right now if you continue to be in this mode for some time then what happens is we go to the next level where we logically put reasons for these emotions correct so for example let's say i'm feeling hopeless or helpless if that's the feeling i'm dealing with then when i when we sit back and think that my logical brain the logic in my brain tells me you're feeling hopeless because let's say the boss is giving you repetitive work right another part of the brain will say you know what you're feeling hopeless because you're not as good as x in your team another part of the logical brain might tell you you're feeling hopeless because you have not upskilled yourself maybe okay another part of the logical brain when you have spoken to a friend and the friend has told you hey it happens all the time right now in the industry that's the trend then you'll say hey in the trend that's the trend in the industry fine what can i do about it right so when the logic comes in so there are two things i'm talking to you about one the first thing where those emotions come up the self defense mechanism come up that is our instinctive brain that is the brain that we all have which wants to protect us it is natural and then comes the logical brain so logical brain is based on information facts the information could be generated by you from the knowledge and from your own sources or it could be information that you've got from somewhere just by observing also so the logical brain and instinctive brain are constantly dialoguing okay and that is what is the cause for us remaining in that quick set because what is happening there's overburden on the brain we are only thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and we are getting deeper and deeper so when you're thinking you're just there yeah so imagine you're in that pit, pit and you're thinking oh god i'm in the quicksand i think i'm going to be pulled in i'm going to die oh hopeless situation why me in this fix let's say i'm imagining all this and i'm just remaining there and not doing anything about it i just yeah so i feel i'm getting stuck now if if the trick here is so i've explained to you what it is to be in a quick sand and how it works and how sometimes because of our own thinking patterns our own doing and not doing something we get into a quick sand kind of a situation now let me quickly tell you what simple things that we can do okay so if you some of you have watched some videos um on youtube you will see that the way to get out of a quicksand pit is well let's say you're stuck like this okay let's say the here till here is the quicksand yeah and here this is your feet imagine and this is where so the, they say that what you have to do is that you have to lie down like this okay because in quicksand humans can float so if you lie down like this yeah you you get a grip of uh, of the earth on your back and what you need to do is wriggle your legs now remember your legs are getting caught 
So if you know how concrete works, right? You've seen concrete. If it's kept without motion, it hardens. That's why you have concrete mixers which, are, which move constantly. So that's the trick. Imagine yourself, if you want to keep moving, if you don't want your legs to get stuck there and be concretized, you have to move. So what they're saying is, bend your body like this a bit. That means you're saying be flexible, right? Be flexible, look outside and move. So what is this move? Action. So we need a physical movement there. Now if you see right now when you're in this situation, the brain is over waking, physical moment goes down. Your physical body becomes low, low on energy. People, you'll, feel, you'll find people with drooping shoulders and things like that. You want to get out of the situation? Yes, the first thing is to correct your posture. It works. So correcting your posture, um, moving into action. So putting actions. So actions means actually picking up your phone, putting a reminder. Actually putting up a phone and putting a couple of tasks list, lists that, hey, I'm in this situation. Do I want to remain here? That's the first question. You have to really shake yourself physically. Yeah? Because what we have seen is a lot of people start enjoying being in this state of being in the quicksand and feeling, you know, victimized or feeling sorry for themselves. So the first question is shake yourself. Take a pen and paper or key it into your phone or your laptop or whatever and say, ask yourself this question. It helps to key it. What do I want to do? Okay, what do I want? So do I want to remain in this situation or not? One. Two. If I want to get out of the situation, there are two, three quick, quick things. I need to take quick actions. So physical actions. That means I have to really get out there, lift my hand, maybe pick up the phone, make that call to a person but who is the person i'm calling just any random friend doesn't help we need to know whom to connect to so positive people who can bring a new perspective who can give us a neutral perspective that's that's who we need to connect with other people that you could seek uh, uh, you know kind of support are mentors right people who you know are mature so you can seek support from mentors counselors or coaches now as as you progress if you remain in the state for a very very long time the more you stay in this position it's going to be difficult for you to get out so the key is to move that means look at yourself more objectively think and distinguish between your instinctive and logical brain and start seeking support from the right place or forum yeah but so the, the, the key uh, um, takeaway from this session from my side for you would be to do some physical action. That means take an action, not just keep thinking. We need to take some physical action. So this was the message I wanted to share with you. Uh, just give it a try and if you have more questions, I'll take those. All right. So thank you for being with me today. If you have questions, you can keep posting. Thank you. Over well, to uh, thank you, Professor Varsha Chitnis. The session was indeed very insightful. Well, friends, uh, it is our constant endeavor to bring you the best topics and the best faculties to put some light on such topics. And these sessions have been brought to you by the hybrid division of Wellinger Institute. Well, if you or any of your friends are looking to join the Wellinker hybrid program, please do call us on 022-4051-4051, which is the Wellinker admission helpline number. You can also log in to www.wellinkeronline.org. Till then, have a great learning experience. Thank you.